happening, everybody? I am back. We got something bigger and better and trying something new here. So I'm glad I am back first off. Okay. I had like four days off, so I did nothing but research a bunch of cases. And then I finally decided on two I was going to do today. Um, and I actually have a few extra I'm going to do. So it works out wonderful. Um, just real quick, touch base on a few things. Um, it has been hectic. I know a lot of people are worried about this whole COVID-19 coronavirus thing. Um, it's just a new strain, you guys. Everyone's cool. <laughs> um, what else? Um, and with that, if y'all are sitting at home, send me stuff. I am more than willing to do an episode that you guys want to see. Not one that I just want to do, but one that you want to see me research and do. Um, <clears throat> I think it is amazing. And I'm all for audience participation. As you can see, my husband did this. Uh, <laughs> and it is a very exciting time, you guys. I'm not going to lie. I am having a pretty decent week, even though it's been kind of blarb here in Idaho. Um, real quick, I want to do a couple of shout outs and let you guys know. Also, I have a Patreon and a SoundCloud and I'm getting on Discord starting tonight. Well, by the time I'm done with this episode, I'll be on Discord. Um, so we can all have a discussion. I am super stoked about it. And this whole adventure I am on right now is amazing. And it is going in the way that I had hoped and dreamed it would. I'm not going to lie. Bumps in the road, yes, mostly due to work. Um, but other than that, we are doing great, everybody. I have more subscribers. I have more people following me on my pages. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to hopefully, you guys, my goal is to get some merch done. I'm just saying. And I am rambling because my computer, yeah, you know, I'd show you the background of it, but I'm pretty sure not everyone is into My Chemical Romance, uh, <laughs> is being a pain in my butt and is not going to allow my notes to come up for some ungodly reason. And now that I've clicked it like 10 times, I'm going to have 14 different fucking tabs open on Google Docs. Anyways, um... I have been listening to some really amazing podcasts lately and watching a lot of them. <coughs> I swallowed wrong. Uh, and I am super stoked for it. Oh, I have a Twitch. I was going to tell you guys that too. I also have a Twitch. Never thought that would happen. <laughs> but I have a Twitch. And like I said... Everything is going smoothly, and I am honestly more motivated these days than I had been for a while, and I think it's just the winter blues happened, and then I ended up with a little bit of a long weekend, and boom, I colored my MXPX coloring book, researched, nailed everything. So, that being said, let's jump into this. Uh, and then I'll give you guys names of the podcasts I've been listening to and we'll go from there. So today, the first one we are talking about is Joseph Edward Duncan III. And for the record, I do believe I chose all serial killers and spree killers from the state of Idaho. Don't ask me why, but... It's fascinating to know that Idaho actually had serial killers. Because <laughs> Idaho is one of those 
fucking states where you're like, wait, what? <laughs> so, Joseph Edward Duncan III, he is an American serial killer. He is known for raping and killing his victims. He has five to seven plus victims. Uh, the dates of murders are July 6th, 1996. April 4th, 1997, and May 16th of 2005. The date of his arrest, July 2nd, 2005. So. It's going to be amazing. So, Duncan was born on February 25th of 1963 in Tacoma, Washington. His lengthy criminal history dates all the way back to when he was 15 years old and in 1980 he was sentenced to 20 years in prison for sexually assaulting a boy in Tacoma and as a result spent most of his adult life in prison he was paroled in 94 but was returned to prison in 97 for violating the terms of his parole I told you this was going to happen you guys ah that's what I get I get so excited because I'm back to normal and all this shit decides to fucking go haywire. Anyways, so Duncan, he obviously he has a long history as a violent sexual predator. He first, his first recorded sex crime occurred in 1978 in his hometown of Tacoma, Washington at 15. In that incident, he raped a nine-year-old boy at gunpoint. The following year, he was arrested for driving a stolen car. He was sentenced as a juvenile and sent to Disland's Boys Ranch in Tacoma, where he told a therapist he was assigned to his, who was assigned to his case that he had a bound and sexually assaulted six boys, according to a report by the Associated Press. So first off, okay, guys. I want to know if this school is still open. So, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little Google real quick. Sorry about it. I meant to do this earlier, but, you know, it's more fun this way. So, obviously, he is a sick fuck. He claims six, but, you know... Let's see here. Did I spell it right? <laughs> We're about to find out, y'all. No, I did not. I put school, not ranch. That'll show me. For trying to be and do something new. <laughs> um. It is not. open anymore, I do believe. Yeah. Uh, just to come to Washington. Ooh. It is now, ready for this, a junk removal place. Okay, so uh, he had also told The therapist said he estimated that he had raped 13 younger boys by the time he was 16 years old. In the in 1980, also in Tacoma, he stole a number of guns from a neighbor and then abducted a 14-year-old boy and sodomized him at gunpoint. He was then sentenced to 20 years in prison, but was released on parole in 1994 
after serving 14 years. While out on parole, he is known to have lived in several places in the Seattle area. He was arrested in 96 for marijuana use and released on parole several weeks later with new restrictions. <clears throat> Authorities believe that during his parole, he murdered uh, Sammy Joe White and Carmen Cubius. Cubius? If I'm not pronouncing this right, just work with me here. In Seattle in 96. And Anthony Martinez in Riverside County, California in 97. However, both those cases went cold and were not tied to Duncan until after his arrest in the Groen case, which we're going to get into. Uh, he was arrested in Kansas and returned to prison in 97 after violating the terms of his parole. Uh, he was released from prison on July 14th of 2000 with time off for good behavior, and he moved to Fargo, North Dakota. May 16th of 2005, Kootenai County, Idaho. Authorities discovered the bodies of Brenda Groen, 40, her boyfriend Mark McKenzie, 37, and her son Slade Groen, 13, in their home along Lake Coeur d'Alene, outside of the city of Coeur d'Alene, Idaho. Two of Brenda's other children, Dylan, age 9, and Shasta, age 8, were missing. An Amber Alert was issued and searchers combed the area. Uh, while the while the authorities investigated the deaths at the home as a homicide, as homicides, uh, the autopsies determined the cause of death to be blunt force trauma to the head. They also noted that the victims had been bound. Seven weeks later, in the early morning hours of July 2nd, 2005, Shasta was seen in a man's custody at a Denny's restaurant in Coeur d'Alene. A waitress, manager, and two customers at the restaurant recognized her from the media attention and they called the police and positioned themselves to prevent Duncan from leaving. Police officers arrived at the restaurant and arrested him. He, later identif he was later identified as Duncan without any incident. Shasta identified herself to a waitress at the restaurant and to authorities and was taken to Kootenai Medical Center for medical treatment and to be reunited with her father. <laughs> Meanwhile, Coeur d'Alene police detained him on kidnapping charges and on his outstanding federal warrant. Uh, <clears throat> when Shasta was found without Dylan, uh, the authorities had held a little bit of hope in finding Dylan alive, but it was a minimal amount of hope on this. Um, so they decided to start asking the public for help. Uh, any tips, uh, specifically with respect to sightings of the stolen red Jeep Cherokee with Missouri license plates that Duncan was driving at the time of his arrest? Um... Authorities discovered that the car had been rented, that he had rented the car in Minnesota and never returned it. A gas station employee in Kellogg, about 40 miles east of Coeur d'Alene, uh, recognized the vehicle as one that had stopped at her station hours before Duncan was arrested. The employee suspected the girl wandering around the station might have been Shasta, but did not confront her as nothing appeared out of the ordinary. The employee and her manager both notified authorities after reviewing surveillance footage and they realized it was Duncan and Shasta in the video. Uh, many of the tips provided to the authorities centered around remote areas along the Idaho-Montana border. On July 4th, 2005, investigators found human remains at a remote makeshift campsite in the Lolo National Forest near St. Regis, Montana. The remains were sent to the FBI lab in Quantico for DNA testing. They were positively identified as Dylan's. <clears throat> 
So, what I am gathered from her interview is <laughs> she says Duncan killed her mother, older brother, and her mother's fiance, and then took her and her brother away in his red Jeep Cherokee. She also told investigators that her mother called her into the living room from her bedroom where she had been sleeping, and she saw Duncan wearing black gloves and holding a gun. He then tied her mother's hands with nylon zip ties and did the same to her mother's fiance and her older brother Slade. Um, so then she recalls that she and Dylan were removed from the home and put in the red Jeep Cherokee. While she waited with her brother, she heard her mother's fiance scream out and then saw her injured older brother staggering away from the entrance to the home. Duncan then bludgeoned the three to death. Neither Shasta nor Dylan witnessed the murders. Both Shasta and Dylan were removed to other locations where they were repeatedly molested for six weeks. She said that they drove a long distance and stayed in two different campsites. Duncan had told her of having beaten her family members to death with a hammer. Which is true. He used a fucking hammer, you guys. This is no fucking joke here. Uh, Dylan's remains were found in a remote woodland area in Montana days after Shasta was rescued. She is now in the custody of her father. So his other... So Duncan's arrested the FBI to launch a nationwide review of unsolved mercy missing child ugh, missing children's cases he was implicated as a possible suspect in several crimes that occurred between 1994 and 1997 when he was on parole as well as between 2000 and 2005 when he was free from prison although he was cleared as a suspect in some cases authorities in california and washington had enough evidence to believe Duncan had committed unsolved murders in their jurisdictions. <clears throat> so on April 4th, 1997, 10-year-old Anthony Michael Martinez was playing with friends in his front yard of his home in Beaumont, Riverside County, California, when an unknown man approached the group asking for help finding a missing cat. When the boys refused, the man grabbed Martinez at knife point and threw him into his vehicle. There was a two-week search. And finally, on April 19th, little Anthony's body was found nude and partially decomposed in Indio. Um, the investigators had noted that he had been sexually assaulted and bound with duct tape. Although a composite sketch of the suspect was made available and a partial print was taken from the duct tape found on little Anthony's body, the case eventually went cold. I know a lot of people are going to say, oh, you're using his real name. You're getting attached. They're humans. You call them by their first name, not their last name. Okay? Thank you. Um... Sammy Joe White and Carmen Cubius, uh, federal prosecutors have revealed that Duncan confessed to the murders of Sammy Joe, 11, and her sister Carmen, who was 9, who vanished on July 6th of 1996 after leaving the Crest Motel in Seattle, Washington, to Panhandle. The remains were found February 10th, 1998, in Bothell, Washington. So, I'm not going to go into, you know, all the fucking court stuff. So, here's just a little timeline. July 13th was his first court appearance in Kootenai County Court. Uh, he was charged with three counts of first-degree murder and three counts of first-degree kidnapping, all in conjunction with the deaths of Brenda and Slade Brown and Mark McKenzie. 
Uh, prosecutors had initially planned to charge Duncan with the kidnappings of Shasta and Dylan. However, they deferred those charges to the federal court system and is transporting children across state lines for the purpose of sexual exploitation is a federal offense under U.S. law. I'm just going to say this one more time slowly for those in the back. Transporting children across state lines for the purpose of sexual exploitation is a federal offense. U.S. law. It's like the nation's law, people. Fucking uh, all these idiots. I swear to God. I swear. They read criminals. How to be a criminal for dummies. I swear to God. That's like what it is. So his trial was set to begin on January 17th, 2006, but was delayed until April 4th after the district judge granted a request to the defense for more time to prepare for the trial. And then again to October 26th after the judge in the case stated that no one wants to try this case twice, including me. Uh, <laughs> his defense attorneys blamed the multiple postponements on the prosecution's insistence on pursuing the death penalty. Finally, October 16th, 2006, shortly after the jury selection progress began, Kootenai County prosecutors and Duncan's attorneys reached a plea bargain. He pled guilty to all state charges against him. He was immediately sentenced to three consecutive life sentences without the possibility of parole for the three kidnapping charges. Sentencing on the three murder charges was continued pending the outcome of his federal trial on kidnapping and murder charges. <sighs> so, finally, January 18th, 2007, everybody. Duncan was indicted by a federal grand jury in Coeur d'Alene, Idaho, on 10 counts of kidnapping, kidnapping resulting in death, aggravated sexual abuse of a minor, and sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death, and other crimes related to illegal firearm possession and vehicle theft. He... <laughs> he was arraigned the following day at a federal court here in Boise, Idaho, where a judge ordered Duncan to stand trial the following March. Uh, his defense attorneys immediately requested a postponement. <laughs> Anybody noticing, like, a trend here? I'm noticing a trend. Lori Vallow, this guy. Just saying. Uh, which was granted the week the trial was originally scheduled to begin. A new trial date was set for January 22nd, 2008. December 3rd, 2007, Duncan pled guilty to all 10 charges against him as a condition of the agreement. Shasta would not have to testify in the penalty phase of the trial. Due to a gag order, other details of the plea agreement were not released. The penalty phase for Duncan's federal trial began on August 13, 2008. August 27, 2008, after three hours of deliberation, the jury recommended the death penalty and the judge in the case sentenced Duncan to three death sentences for kidnapping resulting in death, sexual exploitation of a child resulting in death, sexual exploitation of a child resulting in use of a firearm and a violent crime resulting in death. All related to the death of Dylan Grown. On November 3rd of 2008, he was sentenced to an additional three federal life sentences for kidnapping Shasta and for sexually abusing Shasta and Dylan. California, on January 18th, 2007, the same day Duncan was indicted in federal court, Riverside County officials announced that Duncan was charged with Martinez's murder. Uh, despite attempts by Riverside County officials to extradite him to California, including an appeal by Governor Arnold Schwarzenegger, 
His federal trial proceeded. He was eventually extradited to California on January 24, 2009, five months after being sentenced to death by federal court. March 15, 2011, he pled guilty to Anthony Martinez's murder. As part of a plea deal, Duncan will be sentenced to life imprisonment without the possibility of parole or right to appeal. Um... Dun, 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 dun. All right. So this next one is so you guys that was Duncan. He it was insane watching that one. Seriously, it really was. Watching it on the news, watching all the video footage all over again. It was intense and it really just like fucked with my head a little bit. All right. So our next one is Paul Ezra Rhodes. This guy looks like a young meatloaf. Just saying. He was a serial killer. Uh, his methods were rape and robbery. Oh. Sorry. Not methods. What he did. He has six victims. And... It happened between the years of 1985 and 1987. Shooting was his method of murder. And all of his crimes were in Utah and Idaho. <laughs> My computer is slowly. Uh, da -da -da -da. All right, so his date of birth, January 18th, January 18th, 1957. <laughs> I'm getting there slowly. We're about to see if my computer wants to continue to cooperate or not. All right. So, I wrote a summary, but my summaries are so fucking boring. They even bore me, and I, yeah, no. so, please hold. Okay, screw it. So, I'm not going to go into his childhood, even though it's pretty fascinating to me the childhood and the psychology aspect of everything. But I'm going to get straight into the timeline on this one, you guys, because I think <clears throat> it's needed a little more. And it gives you guys, like, a sense of who the fuck this homie was. Hmm, 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 hmm. All right, so. Let's start with this. February 28th, 1987. All right. Don't remember what fucking kind of car is going around, what TV shows were on. None of it. I can't fucking think of it right now. 21-year-old Stacy Don Baldwin was abducted while working at the Red Mini Barn convenience store in Blackfoot, Idaho. She was then taken to a secluded location and shot several, several times. She died approximately an hour and a half later. March 17th, 1987. Nolan Hayden, a 23-year-old student, was shot five times while working at Buck's Convenience Store in Idaho Falls. His body was found in the store's walk-in cooler. March 19, 1987. Susan Michaelbacher, 34, a special education teacher, was abducted in, the parking, in a parking lot at 7 a.m. 
forced to withdraw money from her checking account, driven to a rural location, raped and shot nine times, resulting in her death. So, Rhodes was a high school dropout who began drinking at the age of 10, suffered polio as a child, and developed a serious meth addiction addiction as an adult. Drugs are bad, okay? Um, so, his final meal was offered, so he was offered hot dogs, sauerkraut, mustard, ketchup, onions, relish, baked beans, veggie sticks, ranch dressing, jello with fruit, and strawberry ice cream cups. That is the same fucking meal for every person on death row. <laughs> His final words. To Burt Michael Bacher, I am sorry for the part I played in your wife's death. For Hayden and Baldwin, I can't help you. You still have to keep looking. I'm sorry for your family. I can't help you. I took part in the Michael Bacher murder, and I can't help you guys. I'm sorry. He then told his mom goodbye. He then turned to the executioner or warden and said, I forgive you. I really do. So... <clears throat> November 18th, 2011, 9.15 a.m., Paul Ezra Rhodes was pronounced dead. He was a, he was a big boy, just so y'all know. He was 6 foot 2, 259 pounds. He's a little... Eyes, brown hair. Uh, and he was from Idaho Falls originally. That's where he was born and raised. Uh, I'm not going to go through all the dockets here. Uh, da -da All right, so as an Idaho native, born in 1957, Rhodes boasted a record of small-time arrests dating from the age of 21. May 78, he was charged with refusal to disperse, and grand theft charges were filed against him six months later. The latter count dismissed prior to trial. A new charge of refusal to disperse was lodged in March of 82. In June of that year saw him booked for petty theft. Rhodes was arrested for driving without a license in June of 85 and again in March of 86. But more serious charges of burglary were dismissed in January of 86. He had been lucky, but police were only chipping at the apex of a lethal iceberg. <sighs> And if authorities were right in their suspicions, Rose began his hunt for human prey in the in the state of Utah, gunning down 16-year-old Christine Gallegos in Salt Lake City in May of 1985. Eleven months later, 20-year-old Carla Maxwell was shot to death in the robbery of a latent Utah convenience store. Lisa Strong, aged 25, was the third Utah victim blasted on a Salt Lake City street in May of 86. February 27, 1987, um, Stacey Baldwin, who was 21 at the time, was kidnapped from her job at a convenience store in Blackfoot, Idaho, shot dead and dumped outside the city limits. Officers saw no connection four days later when a 19-year-old college co-ed was abducted, robbed, and raped in Rexburg. But the links would show. Only in a matter of time, people! March 16th, 20-year-old Nolan Haddon was fatally wounded in the robbery of an Idaho Falls convenience store. Three days later, Susan Michael Bacher, a 34-year-old special education teacher vanished en route to her classes in Idaho Falls. 
She was discovered shot to death outside of town March 21st. Paul Rhodes, meanwhile, had fled the city in his mother's car. The vehicle reported to police as stolen. He was picked up in Elko, Nevada on March 25th after a traffic accident led to identification of the missing car. So ballistics were ran and matched a confiscated revolver to the three deaths in Idaho and warrants were issued charging Rhodes with murder, kidnapping, uh, robbery, rape, and an infamous crime against nature. The courts ruled out an insanity plea in November of 1987. And Rhodes was held over for trial on the outstanding charges. Which, obviously, he was guilty. I'm just saying. We all know what happens. He gets executed. And I couldn't really find anything on the two in Utah while I was researching and that really upsets me. But, say la vie, my friends. So that was Joseph Edward Duncan and Paul Ezra Rhodes. Homeboy looks like fucking meatloaf. And I... Duncan looks like a fucking hillbilly skeletor. Okay. <laughs> All right. Some shout outs here. I want to give a shout out to Steve. Mwah. I love you, my friend. I'm so glad you're healthy. Uh, he's one of my residents, and I love that man to death. I really do. We have coffee all the time at work. It's amazing. Um, let's see here. What podcast have I been listening to? One in Crime is good. Let's see here. I have quite a few, my friends. Uh, crime Junkie. I'm not pulling up Eminem right now. I swear, everybody. We were listening to Eminem in the car. Um, my podcast. Uh, last podcast on the left is good. True Crime Garage. Dateline. Cults. Uh, dude, the True Crime Enthusiast is really fucking good, too. Um, okay, this one is not a crime podcast but the last degree of kevin bacon's funny as fuck i've been listening to it at work <laughs> um <laughs> minds of madness that one's a good one obviously crime junkie criminology oh my god that was a good one <sighs> the serial holic that one. Oh my god. That guy is fucking phenomenal. Everybody needs to go listen to it right now. Um, the guy's name is David Jari. Jesus Christ. He is amazing. Um, so yeah. No. Check that out. As you guys can see, remember, go like my Facebook. I'm getting a Twitter set up. I'm getting a Discord. Don't forget, I have Patreon. Just go to patreon.com and type in murder and coffee. Okay, everybody. <laughs> um, what else? I'm on SoundCloud so you guys can listen to me on the go. Uh, I'm everywhere. I am like starting to become a social media whore. <laughs> um, remember, you guys, send me messages. I am always fucking down to do something you guys want me to check out uh maybe what i'll do is have like a little q a session with you guys on facebook live maybe on youtube live who knows haven't decided yet but remember everybody drink that coffee i'm pretty sure at some point my husband's gonna swap me over to decaf because i haven't been sleeping well and just Remember, y'all are awesome, and we're going to help a lot of people doing this. Um, stay tuned for my next episode. I do believe it's a missing persons case, so thank you. Mwah.